This is the BMW M8 Grand Coupe with competition package. At the time of filming, this is one of the two quickest currently available four-door cars with an internal combustion engine. <sighs> Quite a niche. If this is your first time here, subscribe so you don't miss out on things like this. The BMW M8 Grand Coupe is a four-door limousine with a falling roofline. It's almost as big as the standard wheelbase BMW 7 Series. The 7 Series has 307 cm wheelbase, while the 8 Series Grand Coupe is just below 303 cm. A 190 plus cm driver can sit behind himself in the back, preferably without a head, but legroom is more than generous. The BMW 8 Series is almost 5 cm lower than the 7 Series and that's in its highest point, but the 8 Series has a coupe-like back after all. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but as far as I'm concerned, the 8 Series Grand Coupe is a stunning looking car to which I panted and puffed for a couple of hours kneeling with my tripod and filming beauty shots with planes in the background. By the way, thanks Matt for having me over in your aero club and letting me film also on the runway. By the way, if you're in Poland the first weekend of September 2020, check out Flyfest PL. Piotrków Trybunalski is just 90 minutes drive away from Warsaw. And now enough talking, let's see if the BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe can really accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.2 seconds. Here I have to do some editing magic, because before I can initiate the launch control procedure, the car needs to drive for at least 10 kilometers and warm up. I admit, while I was hooning on the runway, I got so excited, I never managed to properly initiate launch control, and I timed the car with a borrowed race logic device at 3.7 seconds. The result was consistent. When I later realized I'm too dumb to understand BMW's launch control sequence, I had to repeat the exercise on an empty but public road. Don't do this, I'm a professional idiot. Unfortunately, I no longer had the race logic with me, so there may be a small discrepancy in the results. In my opinion, the launch control sequence in the BMW M8 is so complicated, you won't do it by accident. So, first you have to completely disable the traction control, put everything in sport, select sequential gear change, and then you have to step on the brake as hard as you can, push the accelerator, and only then the launch control engages. Hopefully. A couple of months ago in the Porsche Taycan I just engaged sports mode, stepped on the brake and pressed the gas and off I went. BMW is no Porsche. There is a paragraph in the manual discouraging you from using launch control as it leads to quicker wear of components and also if certain conditions are not met launch control may not be initiated, making you look rather foolish at the lights. In some markets, you pay about 20 grand for the M competition package on top of the regular M8. This gets you a tenth of a second quicker 0 to 100 km per hour time and two tenths of a second quicker to 200 km per hour, 11 seconds instead of 11.2. In other markets, to make it seem like a better deal, there is no regular M8. You just pay 40 grand on top of the M850i and then you think you're getting more bang for your buck, even if you don't know how to initiate launch control. 
I mentioned this in my Porsche Cayenne review. During Porsche events, the media is encouraged to drive the wheels of the car and we rarely have the strength or the courage. During BMW M or Mercedes AMG events, we do more cooldown laps than we do actual fast driving. BMW M8 competition is a sports limousine, but it's more limousine than sports. I took the BMW M8 into Poland's Table Mountains to the so-called Road of 100 Corners. Last year I drove the Porsche 911 there, so I was interested to see how one of the two quickest currently available ICE sedans, sorry, coupes, will perform there. For this twisty and narrow road, the BMW M8 is too large and too heavy. It's not as agile as the 911 or even the Taycan. Yes, it may have a high revving 4.4 liter V8 with two twin scroll chargers, but as easy as it is to get up to speed between corners, it's just as hard to slow it down before the next turn. And that's with the optional carbon ceramic M brakes for 8,580 euro. That's why the highlight of my road trip was the airfield, where the BMW M8 competition could show what it does best. And it behaves like an American muscle car. Just like the current generation of the BMW M5, also the M8 is four-wheel drive, but you can disengage the front axle and leave rubber and smoke behind. You're probably thinking, burning rubber in a 625 horsepower car looks easy. I can do that. Well, let me tell you that all-wheel drive is for people who think they are invincible and who forget to let go of the accelerator. Fortunately, this is an airfield, so even the grass is smooth and therefore I didn't roll over, though then I would probably get a million views. Sure, it would be spectacular and probably I'd become famous as the guy who rolled a 200 grand BMW on an airfield, but I'd rather be known for whinging about cars than being a wanton driver, as my English teacher once called me when I overtook her while drifting on a roundabout. Hello, Miss Poole. Poole with an E at the end. By the way, the runway was just 950 meters long, which is quite short for the speeds this car can do. Think about it before you race your chariot of fire down a supermarket parking lot. But I drove this car for over 1000 kilometers on the motorways, dual carriageways, B roads, cities. How is the M8 in normal everyday use? On the motorway, I thought visibility is pretty decent for this type of a car, and indeed, rear visibility is great. But because of the thick A-pillars, on a twisty road, you end up taking left turns blind. Same thing when you reach a junction and you have to do the meerkat. Above 100 km per hour, there is noticeable wind noise around the side mirrors. Also, you can hear the engine and the exhaust all the time. I get it, it's an M car, so you want to feel the excitement, but a few hundred kilometers with cruise control later, you'd rather have a more refined car. Speaking of cruise control, in this M8, the lane change assist has not been unlocked yet, but this could be a matter of a software update. I really loved this feature in the X6M. It's a step towards autonomous driving. Even in an M car, you may want to relax before you reach a fun bit of road. You can afford a car like this to drive fast when you want to, not because you have to. And while we're on the subject of the price, this test car costs about 194,000 euro, so the cup holder cover, which is creaking on bumps, is unacceptable. Bad roads happen everywhere.
The M8 is very rigid, which is no surprise. However, this rigidity can be felt not only during fast corners, but unfortunately, mainly on regular roads. I get it, you buy this sort of a car for bragging rights, but the M8 competition is not the quickest, but only one of the two quickest ICE four-door cars out there. The second one is the Mercedes-AMG GT63 S Firmatic Plus 4-door coupe. The BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe wins because its name is 12 characters shorter. The sound. Hmm. Well, you be the judge of that. Just in case you are interested, the BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe uses about 12 to 13 liters per 100 kilometers when driven reasonably on the motorway. A couple of hours on the runway put me in the low 20s. That's 19 US and 23 Imperial and 10 US and 13 Imperial MPG respectively. The BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe interior is only slightly different from that of the BMW M850i Coupe I drove 18 months ago. The main difference is the M shifter, which has reverse, left and forward, and drive is to the right. The digital instrument cluster has two modes, regular, which we've seen in many new BMW models, with the rev counter going in the opposite direction than the speedo, and the sport mode with the rev counter in the form of two stripes on either side of the speedometer. The HUD can display the speed, the speed limits, sat nav directions, as well as the rev counter. The display options can be assigned to road, track and race modes. There are separate settings for various elements of the drivetrain and two M buttons on the steering wheel to which you can assign your favorite settings. In my opinion, for a GT, the BMW M8 Grand Coupe has insufficient storage. The cubby behind the cup holders is too small for a large smartphone. The armrest storage is too small and so is the glove box. Cup holders and door pockets are small as well. There is a surprising amount of space in the back here and that's not just because I still remember how useless the back seats in the Coupe version were. Here, the seats are very long, clearly designed for taller passengers. I have some headroom as well. Of course, I'm only 175 centimeters tall. There are two USB-C ports, a place for your phone, dual zone climate control here in the back, cup holders and some storage in the armrest. Here we go, like so. There is also a middle seat with a seat belt believe it or not, come out. See, you can sort of pop it right here in like this. Uh, that's probably for a child seat or a child or someone you really don't like. Anyway, there are isofix points on the side seats under these magnetic flaps. That's actually quite cool. And you can also open the middle part of the backrest and uh, I don't know carry some skis or whatever sport you like doing. I'm not much of a sporty person as you can probably tell. The backrests fold 40-20-40 creating a flat loading area. At 440 liters the boot should accommodate weekend luggage for two couples. I packed for a two-day filming trip and I even brought a cool box because Anna has her favorite supermarket in Wrocław where we visited our friends after we finished filming. By the way that's 300 kilometers from where we live and we sometimes go to the supermarket as a day road trip thing. Never mind. Prices of the BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe started 162,000 euro at the carbon ceramic brakes, carbon external pack, Bowers and Wilkins audio, and a few minor options. And you are looking at 194 grand.
The BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe is a luxurious European muscle car and a GT, two in one. You can take your friends to the mountains and scare them to death along the way. Huzzah! And how do you like the BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe? Is that your cup of tea or would you rather get the cheaper but equally exciting X6M? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you subscribe, like and share my videos, I get to review cars like this and BMW doesn't mind if I ruin their tires. Also, guys like Matt invite me to burn rubber on the runway. So, cheers to that. Subscribe and join me every Friday for new reviews. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.